Rivers are vital for the functioning of ecosystems and for biodiversity, but they are also very vulnerable to contamination. Of all the rivers that run through the Kruger National Park, the Olifants River system is the most stressed. While most of us were celebrating bringing in the new year, a crisis was unfolding that threatened this already stressed river system. When I walked across, you know, the Olifants River, all of a sudden, we started to see uh, lots of dead fish, and, and when I say lots, literally hundreds of dead fish. The department wants to determine is it the act of God or pure negligence. We would like to know what really happened. These shocking images were what greeted fishermen on the morning of the 30th of December. Hundreds of dead fish lying amidst waterlogged grass with a foam-like scum frothing on top of the water. The fishermen, who wouldn't appear on camera in fear that it could affect their livelihoods, were willing to take us to the site where they found the fish. I've never actually seen such an obvious environmental damage footprint as this. I mean, to, to be able to see that, you know, that water line all the way around through the grass is, is astonishing. Yes, we, we were quite shocked when we arrived here. Luckily, we had been, been alerted by um, a very concerned uh, member of the public. When they arrived on the 31st of December, the water was still flowing strongly straight into the Salati River. We can actually see the path it took from the trail of burnt grass left behind. There was a lot of foam, which also the, the fishermen had reported, which led us to be really concerned that this was not just water that was spilling from somewhere. Finding out what was flowing into the river was critical, so the team took a series of water samples. We found um, incredibly low pHs, below two, so that's really, really acidic, which really shocked us. This meant that the water flowing into the Salati River had a pH similar to that of battery acid. Have you, have you ever seen pH levels that low in an environmental survey? No. We ourselves haven't, and it would be one of an environmentalist's worst nightmares, is to have that sort of water flowing straight into the system that's flowing straight into the park. pH 2.97. In fact, the pH was still really low when we returned to the site 16 days later, as water should have a pH of around about 7. The next question was how far had the contamination spread? As 13 kilometres downstream, the Salati joins the Olifants River and enters the Kruger National Park. We immediately took samples downstream and what really horrified us was the fact that even far downstream, the pH was still below 5. This is catastrophic for aquatic life because while taking the samples, we came across many, many fish kilns. This was despite both the Salati and Olifants Rivers being in flood meaning that there was even more water in the system than normal to dilute the contaminants. So whatever had leaked into the river system was both very acidic and had leaked in huge quantities. What we are a little concerned about also is beside for the really acidic water and the very low pHs, what else might be in this water? Well, we know that Bosfeld phosphate, a fertiliser plant on the banks of the Salati, was the source of the spill. But did factors outside of their control play a role? This is the impoundment dam behind me, which is filled with acidic water from runoff and processed water from the phosphoric acid plant, which is just over the other side of uh, the dump here. On the 30th of December, it was this dam that burst its banks, allowing contaminated water from the dam to mix with fresh water in a stormwater canal that flows directly into the Salati River. We obviously deployed resources to start uh, the immediate um, remedial work and trying to fix as fast as possible. The canal's sluice gates were dropped and an earthen wall was built to prevent any more contaminated canal water from entering the Salati. They also diverted the water from the storm canal and the impoundment dam to an unused dam on site in order to drop the water levels so further mixing wouldn't occur. Once this water subsided, it was then discovered that there's actually a crack in this cement uh, canal and that there is water pouring from the impoundment dam into the canal. We are investigating currently exactly what's happened to the incident uh, management report. 
Speaking to staff on site about why the impoundment dam overflowed, they blamed the heavy rainfall the previous two days, combined with the closure of the acid production plant that removed water from the impoundment dam to use in its production process. Independent of what caused the initial contamination event, it was the apparent lack of communication from Bosfeld Phosphate which really hindered the Sandparks investigation. A major concern the Sandparks had was that they didn't know what was in the water, and in fact the fact that a spill had occurred. Uh, is there a, a plan going forward to, to improve that level of communication? There certainly is. Um, I think we're working very closely with uh, the Department of Water Affairs. Um, and environmental affairs, and there is a there, there is a protocol um, which which has to be followed and has to be adhered to. So much stricter measures will be put in place. This is for the department one of a very highly serious incident. So we immediately deployed a team down here to come and investigate and take water quality samples to assess what is the real situation. As we were filming, the blue scorpions noticed that highly acidic water appeared to still be entering the river system, and the source seemed to originate from the Bosfeld phosphate site. A number of individuals came from the site, and this is when the action really started. So the water that is flowing down here is a new leak that uh, the dam on the Bosfeld phosphate uh, property sprung just this morning. And the plan seems to be that uh, they have brought this dozer in just to stop the water from reaching the Salati River. They're then going to treat it with soda ash uh, to raise the pH and uh, make it just slightly healthier for the river when it does ultimately run down into the valley. While none of the men carrying out the work were authorised to speak to us, they didn't attempt to stop us filming. It appears the second leak was from the dam to which water from the impoundment dam had originally been rerouted. Uh, this is very reactive environmental management, it's a very blunt response, uh, but it is uh, an appropriate emergency response to the situation that we saw developing here. While some will see the second spillage as simply a continuation of the initial event, there are others that question whether this truly is a one-off. As a grond ANR, as ek baie te leer gesteld, om rede die saak, die besoedeling, kom al 15 jaar terug. Gerry Mere is a farm owner in the area who's collected photographic evidence of what he believes are contamination events originating from the site that have been polluting the Salati and Olifants River systems for the past 15 years. It's not just the rivers he believes have been contaminated, it's the groundwater too. This pollution stopped me farming, stopped my whole life. Gerry's concern is that this is not a one-off but simply the last in a long history of contamination events, raising the question that if this isn't an isolated event, how was it that it was not picked up earlier? We've been investigating this uh, industry for some time now. The department have issued a pre-directive in May last year already. It was a result of an audit, but also we picked up an incident is about to happen. And we instructed them to, to do repairs, uh, to rehabilitate. So they knew beforehand what's coming their way. The fact that Bosfeld Phosphate received prior warning that an incident like this was likely to happen raises the question, how was it allowed to happen if the repairs and remediation that the pre-directive stipulated were done? And if they weren't done, then what appeared at first to be an unfortunate accident resulting from a number of contributing factors now looks more like it could have been the result of possible negligence. We asked Bosfeld Phosphate Managing Director Andrew McLagan about the pre-directive and how the spillage was possible if all the measures had been put into place that the pre-directive required. The decision was made to close the plant, the phosphoric acid and sulfuric acid lines um, in September 2013. Um, and that actually leads to um, us not using processed water in the process of evaporation. So that's put a lot of stress on, on, on the business. Um, and then obviously we've had inordinate rainfall. Um, since we bought the plant, we had the one in 100 year flood um, and the one in 50 year flood. So it's, uh, you know, that's obviously exacerbated the situation. Um, and given the, the, the economic climate uh, and, and particularly our business's performance, it's put a lot of stress on, on, uh, on, on, on the company. I'm not saying that that's. Um, an excuse for managing water 
and I think the seriousness and the level of intensity in terms of having to fix this, and I think realising that this is certainly, it needs a much bigger, wider, broader approach in terms of fixing this and, and, and making the, the environment sustainable. One of the measures being put in place to ensure that the contaminated dams are no longer a liability is their remediation. The aim is now to neutralise the contamination by remediating the phosphorus cycle in the dams, essentially re-oxygenating the water to create an environment in which aerobic bacterial activity can take place. By doing this, you are taking out and immediately neutralising most of your toxic gases and your toxic uh, material. Sadly, the remediation only began 16 days after the initial contamination event, rather than as a result of the pre-directive. If action had been taken back then, perhaps this contamination event would never have happened, and Boswell phosphate would have been saved the potential consequences of their apparent inaction. In conjunction with the Green Scorpions, Environmental Affairs and Sandparks, we have laid criminal charges. And currently we are waiting the water quality results to determine to what extent was the Water Act contravened. So we are at a very sensitive stage. The matter, I can't divulge any more information, but we are fast-tracking it. Only time will tell whether the Bosfeld phosphate spill into the Salati River will have permanent environmental consequences and whether the impoundment dam can be rehabilitated. If the effects aren't permanent, then we've been incredibly lucky this time. However, with climate change becoming a reality and more extreme rainfall events predicted in the future, the circumstances that led up to the Bosfeld phosphate spill are likely to happen more often, making it even more imperative to take preventative action before spills occur and not to wait to see if they happen. <laughs>